Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again and today we've got a long awaited update for Counter Strike 2 that shows the developers are listening to our feedback and taking it seriously. Some of these updates have already been implemented in CSGO but there's a lot of new and exciting stuff as well. There's the long awaited VACnet anti-cheat update, map changes and a ton of quality of life improvements. And while you have time, check out Skins Monkey. Use code GABEN and get up to a $5 bonus, select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and exchange your old and ugly CSGO items to something new and shiny from Counter Strike 2. Use code GABEN and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. Let's go through them one by one. First and foremost, what everyone has been waiting for is VAC and VACnet anti-cheat update and the addition of a new Overwatch system. Apparently, all the small demo-related changes from previous updates were made to ensure that there are no issues or bugs when reviewing demos in Overwatch. The Overwatch tab will become one of the main items in the main menu. It's not yet available, but if you try hard enough, you can activate it by hacking into the panorama. Only trusted players will be allowed to review Overwatch cases. This means you'll likely have to meet a certain threshold of wins, rank or overall behavior. For example, in CSGO it was 150 wins. As part of your Counter-Strike work you will download and review replays of Counter-Strike 2 matches on official Valve servers to look for suspicious behavior. When the replay concludes you will be asked to cast verdicts regarding the player's gameplay. In your verdict you will be able to choose from 4 options, aimbot, griffin, wallhack and speed hack. Each of these items has three answer options – guilty, not guilty and maybe. Quote from the localization files. The evidence you reviewed would be judged by any reasonable member of the CS community as clearly demonstrating that the suspect exhibited behavior that was disruptive, anti-competitive or anti-social. For example, deliberately interfering with or trying to damage or be damaged by teammates, not participating for an extended period of time or deliberately losing the match. Use the external software to gain information about locations of their opponents, for example, vision through walls or smoke, flash ban effect reduction, elimination, etc. Use the external software other than those listed above to gain an advantage over their opponents, for example speed hacking, automated jumping scripts, upside down views, etc. However, the aimbot option currently lacks a full description and instead says that before making a decision on this issue you need to check the guide on how to recognize cheats for aiming assistance. For those who are not aware, Overwatch and VACnet are closely linked. Based on a huge amount of verdicts from real people, the Counter-Strike developers train and update the AI-based anti-cheat. But in addition to Overwatch, an interesting feature has appeared in VACnet itself. The system will now automatically detect unusual player behavior in real time. If suspicious factors detected, it will automatically terminate the current match and all friends from the same party, including the suspicious player, will receive a temporary ban from playing official matchmaking. I think this is done so that they don't ban the person immediately, but also don't let them play until their demo is reviewed by someone in Overwatch. The most important things are done and now let's move on to the other updates. You can finally switch from right hand to left hand. For those who are not aware, since CS2 added the display of shadows and first person feed, the mirrored view model sounded a bit silly as the weapon would not match the shadow it cast. But apparently the developers came to the conclusion that this is not that important. And now everything you hold will look like a right hand from third person and left hand in first person. The most interesting thing is that this feature has been added as a separate setting option and for quick switching you can bind a separate button pressing which will mirror your hands. And importantly all players on the server will see the hand choice of each player individually. Next is an unexpected but very useful feature related to grenade lineups. Now if you hold one of the mouse buttons before throwing a grenade, after a short delay a new scope will appear on your screen, with which you can adjust the trajectory and throw with an accuracy of almost every pixel. And the cool thing is that the time and activation of this function can be changed for each grenade individually. You can also now change the scale of the displayed map with a button press and adjust the size of the radar itself in the settings. Personally, I really needed this, especially during moments when you need to track the actions of all teammates at the beginning of the round. An extremely important panel has appeared in the buy menu that displays all dropped on the ground weapons within the buy zone radius. 
This means that instead of constantly switching between weapons or asking someone to drop a weapon you can't reach, you can simply press a button and the item will appear in your hands. And in the upper right corner the minimum amount of money you'll have at the beginning of the next round is displayed assuming you don't kill anyone, plant or defuse the bomb. In other words, it's a hint to help you decide whether to buy now or go for an echo round. The tab menu is now displayed by pressing the escape key. This allows you to track the score while doing something else in the settings or interacting with friends. A slight change to the view model Bob, as before it looked like you were riding a horse and now it looks like you are normally running. An icon has been added to the kill feed for kills while airborne to tilt your opponents further. In the tab menu bots are now displayed with a separate small robot icon. Reduced or increased reward for killing with a Zeus, CZ-75 or XM. A very questionable replacement of the overpass map with Dust 2 in premier mode and most interestingly in the tournament map pool. So instead of adding something like Train, they decided to experiment with the unforgettable classic again. Speaking of maps, in the same podcast the hosts also mentioned that they discussed future maps with the developers and they made it clear that Train is one of the maps that is being worked on. Considering that a simple port would take much less time, it can be assumed that the developers are working on a full remake, as it was with Inferno and Overpass. Inferno has finally been updated cause many players complained about its liminality. There are quite a few changes, but the most important ones are the removal of the arches, buildings and their roofs from mid and banana. Honestly, the map feels much more breathable now. Plus, minor fixes and performance improvements on other maps. They added an extremely important feature that allows you to launch a custom lobby with friends on any official map or from the workshop. This will finally allow you to properly test various mods without needing to host your own server. So, if you haven't seen my video about the map with Minecraft mechanics, go watch and play on it. And how could we forget a 75% discount on major sticker capsules? So run and invest! Leave a comment with suspicious drop emoji if you also liked this update and check out my previous video where I talk about new maps, weird anti-cheat situation and much more. Until next time!